Hi guys, it's Kobe here and in today's video we are going to talk about the inheritance effector in Smart4D's mole graph menu. So the inheritance effector basically lets your clones or your object inherited inherit the position scale rotation or sometimes even the animation of another object. So we will see how we will use it to create something like this, like a text letter X morphing to the letter O, right? Something very interesting like basically morphing one object into another um, and also something like the domino kind of effect which you can quickly simply create it with no hassle so I'll simply come in here and I'll create a normal clone and I'll put in something like a cone I'll make it a bit smaller and I'll make it a child of our clone and I'll go ahead and select the clone and now add my inheritance effector so I can come in here and choose the inheritance effector from this menu so our inheritance effector is added to our clone in the effector field and now you can see nothing is happening so what the inheritance effector if you select it and you come to its tabs come to the effector tab you can see it's asking us which object do you want to inherit its position or what scale or rotation so I have to create, give it an object to inherit. So I can use even null. So but now I'll use a pyramid for us to see um, what's happening. So I'll drag me the pyramid to this side, and in the immediately I select the immediately I drag in the pyramid to this object field. You can see now our clones has moved to that space, and I, that means the uh, the clones is inherited in the position. And rotation everything of this pyramid so if I should rotate the pyramid as well you can see the clones are rotating so everything is being inherited the next thing down here and that's because the inheritance mode is set to direct right another thing is we can change it to something like animation and with that what we need is it will inherit the animation of this pyramid so if I should come into here and I select the pyramid come to let's say it's rotation right and now come frame 10 and probably rotate it you are just rotate it on the heading and now hit play you can see if I hit play our clones is also our clones are also rotating and that's the but I'm not one thing you notice is it's not rotating as fast as the original pyramid and that's because the speed or how it should animate has been set in here so it starts from frame 0 and it ends at frame 90 so it's playing our animation which is 10 frames in the pyramid 90 frames in here so if you want to make it rotate just like our pyramid then it means you have to set it to um, from frame, start from frame 0 to frame 10 and now if we hit play, you can see it rotate as fast as our object. We can also offset it, can make it start from frame, let's say 15 to frame um, 25, and it will wait to frame 15 to 25 before it plays. Right now, you can see it's rotating the clone as one object because in the transform space it's set to um, generator, so we can change it to node. And now it will rotate every individual object. So if I hit play, it's rotating. You can see in here, I'll actually bring the start to zero and break this one to say 15. And if I hit play again, you can see it's rotating. But because it's a cone, you don't we don't see it. So probably I'll come in here and I'll change. I'll add something to this bar and I'll animate it. So if I hit play now, you can see what's happening. It's rotating. So everything is rotating at once, right? But we can come into our inheritance and now you can see in here we have step gap. So we can offset every individual node and it will play one after the other with depending on the frames that we offset it. So if I set, like say, five frames offset and we hit play, see, it plays individually, one by one and every one. So I actually used it to do something like a domino um, looking effect so 
I basically have an object which I have animated in here. I'll hide this. And you can see I have this cube which I have actually animated like it's falling on its tip in here. So it has its um, pivot down at the bottom of the cube. And I have a similar cube in the same something of um, a cube in the clonal object as well, which also has its pivot down the same place so that it will rotate from that axis. And now, if I should um, hit play, let me actually hide the first uh, cube. Okay, yeah. If I hit play, you can see it's falling like a domino. It's like it's hitting each other, but it's actually not colliding. It's just playing after one another. So that's why. And that's because in the inheritance effector, you can see the step gap upset it to 5 and the end and the start to 0 and 10. But you can sometimes play ar ar along around with it too. Make sure you get the right figures for it to feel like uh, it's actually hitting each other before it falls. So this is just a tip of what the inheritance effector can do. Let's actually create a new scene and see another way we can use the inheritance effector. So I'll come here and I'll create um, a matrix object in here. And I'll go ahead and create another one. So I actually hold control to duplicate it. I'll call this one plane. Well, I'll call this flat. And I'll call this um, sphere. Because I'm going to clone it on a sphere. So I'll create my, let's say, sphere in here. And now in the sphere, I'll come to object tab and I'll change it to objects. And I'll drag in my sphere, right? So we are cloning on the sphere. So I'll go ahead and even hide the sphere so that we see what's going on. Now, in what's happening is that in the sphere, I'll actually increase the rate to say, um, the, because this one is because this one is forty by forty, the um, flat matrix is. 40 by 40 that's about 1600 um, clones right so i'm going in the sphere and i'll actually put in the 1600 in here so it's now covering our sphere so i can go ahead and i'll hide this as well so we, what we want to do is to want to morph it from this fl flat to the sphere actually you know what let's create a cube something different so i'll go ahead and create a cube and I'll set this one to object as well. Object. And I'll put in the cube. And now I'll put in the 1006 in the cube as well. So we have two different shapes. Right. But I'll go ahead and hide the cube as well. I can actually even move the cube to the side. Um, to the side so that we see exactly what's happening. So we have two different shapes. So one is sphere and one is a cube right so we want to move the cube from uh, the, sh the particles of the cube to the particles of the sphere and you can use the inheritance effector to do that very easily so with the flat switch is the cube I actually name it to cube rather with the cube selected we can come to more graph effectors and now add our inheritance effector now it will add ask us which object do we want to inherit so i'll drag in i'll say we want you to inherit the sphere right and now nothing happens but down here you can see immediately i added the sphere the morph motion came on if it's not there let me actually clear it you can see it's grayed out you can't select it but immediately i drag in the sphere you see it's enabled so I, when i immediately i check it you can see now straight away it goes straight to inherit the position of the um, particles on uh, the sphere particle. So if I should increase the strength and reduce it, you can see now it's morphing from a cube particles to um, sphere particles. And you can use um, fall off to control it. So I can come in here now use something like the linear fill. And now you can see it's moving from the cube into a sphere and now a sphere back into cube 
So the inheritance is very, very, very powerful. We can use it to do a lot of interesting stuff as well. So in this scene, I use the inheritance effector to morph an, um, a text X particles, morph it from X to O, which I simply um, use the same technique I did using this um, cube and the sphere. In this case, I use um, text, so I use X and I use O, and you can see it's morphing, it's moving from the particles of the X, then smoothly moving into the particles of the O. So, and here is the scene, it's a simple scene which I can actually explain. So, if I come in to the X, you can see the way I created the, um, the cube. So, I have the text X in here, and you can see down here I have the text O, right? And I've put it in the connect object so that I can um, clone the um, matrix object on, on it. So, in the matrix X, you can see I have the X connect object in here, and the O, I have the O connect object in here. And the matrix is like I have a lot of matri um, matrix. So if I come there, it's set to fi like 50,000 actually. And because it's matrix, it's a bit faster. It's, it wouldn't slow down. So both is set to 50,000. And what I've done is I've used the inheritance effector in here. If I come to the effector, you can see it's set to the O. So it's morphing to the O. And now I've add the motion. I've checked the morph motion, right? So in the inheritance, I'm using the linear field and i've actually overlaid the random field on the linear field so that it gives us that it doesn't move smoothly like that it moves a bit with a bit of um roughness or randomness in the movement it doesn't move linearly just like that right so you can see the linear um field is moving in here and now i've added delay so it doesn't go like that it ends very smoothly so the delay if i come to the inheritance um i mean the x and i come to effect test you can see i've added delay so that you give it that smooth ending right and with the o2 what i've done is i've added the randomness so that it doesn't quickly settle with o so you can see before the o settles like it's a bit rough and you know now in the random two what I've added is I've added a time field so that it sort of animated over time and ends at like in rim, um, frame 160 and I've offsetted it a bit and I've inverted it as well because if I don't do that because I'm using the same um how do you call it if, if I don't do that even when the um, particles land you can see the, the time will still be now playing and stuff like that so I've inverted it so so that everything plays smoothly so basically it's the same setup using the cube but a bit more particles and nothing complicated about it and if you like you can actually come in here and add something like the you know what let me actually reduce the particles a bit so that i'll reduce it to say um, 10,000 for now and you can come in here probably add the more graph effect um volume volume builder if you want to give it a bit of um skinning or something so i can do the volume builder and i'll put my x in the volume builder you can see in here so i come to the volume builder i'll reduce the vessel size to like say probably one let's see but i can see it's big it's still big in here and when you are dealing with particles and stuff like that when you come in the volume builder you can see the x has been added when i select it and I come to the radius down here. You can see it's set to 15. I can change it to like say 4. And now it looks a bit cleaner. All right. So now I can add a bit of smoothness to it. And now I can add. Let's hit play to see what happens. I mean it was slow but. Um, yeah so it begins to have some sort of liquidish stuff. Morphing. Right, so with a bit of work and play around with, with it, you can actually come up with something very interesting. You know, so it's moving from X, some sort of milk or something, from X to O, which is very quite interesting. So the inheritance effector can be very, very powerful depending on the stuff you want to use it to do. All right, so now the O. Has formed and now yeah 
if you like you can actually still come in and add a bit more smoothness so probably with the smooth deformer um added on top of it where is the smooth deformer uh, i'm still looking for smoothing yeah so i can add it in here uh, on top on top actually where is the so we can now mesh a uh, volume builder so we can come to volume volume measure now yeah so okay and put in the uh, measure rather so in the smoothing now yeah and set it to probably 20 to it so that it gets a bit more smoother and stuff like that you can play around to get a good looking some um feel and with a bit of play around you can get something looking nice so that's basically what um the inheritance effector you can use it to to do you can if you are smart about it you can use it to do a lot of interesting things right so if i like i can actually put let's say the x or the the i'll bring the o i'll keep on this at the demo at the same position the x as well at the same position right and now if we hit play i can select the linear field and now i'll move it so it, you see i want to move one thing it's a technique um it's not about inheritance but it's, for instance i've animated the thing and now i've moved my x so i want to shift my animation as well if i move the the linear field you can see everything like still the animation is still there so if i hit play it will go back to that position but i want to move the linear field with my animation what i can do is i'll change it from model mode to animation mode now if i move you can see my animation is also moving you get it so let me uncheck the delay so that we see what's happening so if i move you can see my animation is moving so now if i hit play the animation starts from there so there is a tip a quick tip that you can actually use in this stuff and now the morph happens right in there after that you have to make sure you set it back to model mode so that it moves the object so this all about the um, inheritance effector and if you're smart about it you can do a lot of interesting stuff with this inheritance effector i hope it was a good tutorial and something you enjoyed and if you enjoyed please kindly like and subscribe for me that helps and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching